Hi, this is code in heap sorting Kotlin. Let's begin with a test for array-based binary min heap, where heap will be represented as an array of integers. As a quick reminder, min heap is a binary tree where each node has value which is less than or equal to its children. For example, 1 is less than 5 and 3, 5 is less than 7 and 9, and 3 is less than 8. Min heap can also be represented as an array using breadth first traversal. For example, take the first level of the tree and to the array, take the second level 5 and 3 and to the array, and take the third level 7 and 8 and add to the array. So this is what array here represents. Let's also define size variable, and when we add 1 to the heap, we expect it to be equal to array of 1, 0, 0, 0. For simplicity, let's define add function right here in the test. The assertion is failing the way we expect, so let's implement the function in the simplest possible way. Now we can add a couple more elements to the heap, for example, two and three. Here, two and three are child nodes of the root node with the value one. To make these assertions pass, we can just use size as an index and increment it afterwards. Now let's try adding elements in reverse. So here we added three and here we had three and we added two. However, parent node of two is, is greater than two, so we need to swap them to keep the properties of the heap. Similarly, here we had two and three and we added one, but one is less than its parent node, so we need to swap two and one. To make the swapping work, let's define function called pullup, which will take an index of the element we just added. If index is equal to zero, this is the root of the heap and we can just return. Otherwise, we'll calculate parent index, which will be index minus one divided by two. And if value of parent node is greater than value at index, then we need to swap parent index and index. We also need to call pull up recursively in case there are more than two levels in the heap. However, we don't need it yet, so let's comment it out and enable it when we have a failing test. So now all these assertions pass. Let's add one more element to fill up the array. The next step would be to define remove function, which will remove the smallest element from the heap. It should be easy to write it for the current assertion because heap always contains the smallest element at the root. However, it will be a bit more tricky if we remove another element from the heap. So for now, let's focus on the content of the array. We removed one, and as the first step, we can take the last element, put it at the root of the heap, and then replace it with zero. To do this, let's extract result. Then we set the root of the heap to the last element, and we can reset last element to zero. This is not necessary step. It's useful for assertions, but later on we can just remove it. And at the end, we want to decrement the size. So this assertion is passing now, however, we have the same problem now, is that 2 is less than its parent, so we need to swap 2 and 4. To do the swap, let's define function called push down, which will take index of the root element. Here we want to calculate index of left child, which will be index multiplied by 2 plus 1 and right child. Then we want to find index with the smallest value on the heap. So we take all the indices which we have and we do mean by value on the heap. Because we calculate indices manually, we need to filter them to make sure they're less than size of the heap. And if we didn't find any indices, just return. So this will be mean index. If the current index is not equal to mean index, then we need to swap them. So 
we also need to call push down recursively in case there are more than two levels, but again, we don't need it yet, so let's wait for a failing test. The assertion is passing now, so we can remove one more element. We remove two, now we take the last element, add it to the roots, and then we swap three and four. Removing two more elements from the heap should be more straightforward. All the tests pass, so let's do a bit of cleanup. We can define heap class, then we can rename this heap to ray, and then we can move ray and all the functions into the heap class and start using heap in the test. We can also do a bit of cleanup, for example, make these two functions private and move public functions to the top. We can also make array private, although this, bit more, this is a bit more controversial because now we cannot write these assertions and I'll just remove them all. As you can see, we add elements to the heap in some order, but when we remove, they are sorted. So we're close to doing an actual sort. So let's create a test called can sort list of integers, where we'll have, let's say, a list of one, two, three, and for each permutation, we'll do heap sort. And we expect it to be equal to a list of one, two, three. Let's create heap sort as an extension function on the list interface. For simplicity, let's not make it generic and it will use just ints. Here we'll have heap and we'll add all the elements from the current list to the heap. While heap size is greater than zero, we want to remove the smallest element from the heap and add it to some results. Where result will be an array list of integers. At the end, we just return the result. This assertion is passing, however, we have a couple more to do's, and before we write more assertions, let's do a bit of refactoring. We can define an extension function called can be sorted on the list, and it will be pretty much what we already have, except that we'll replace it with this, and we can now say list of one to three can be sorted, and this is what we just had before. However, now we can also say a list of one, two, three, four can be sorted. This assertion is failing, so let's uncomment one of the recursive calls for pull up. And the test passed now, so this actually helped. Let's try five elements. This assertion is failing now, however, it's failing for a different reason. We just don't have enough elements in this array. Obviously, this is a limitation of the current implementation that array doesn't really grow. So this assertion is passing. Let's try six elements now. The assertion is failing, so let's uncomment another recursive call for pushdown. And the tests are passing now. There was one more to do, so we can just remove this line and we can add a couple more assertions for completeness. We can run this test with code coverage. And as you can see, this is pretty much 100% code coverage and all the tests pass. Let's try something like manual mutation testing. So I'll remove this plus one and run the test. What we would expect is that some tests are failing. And indeed there are a couple of tests failing. So from this, we can conclude that this plus one is covered by some tests. 
Similarly, we can, for example, comment out this line. But there are no failing tests, and we can comment out this minus one, and there are still no failing tests. You might think that maybe implementation is incorrect, but the reality is that there are just not enough tests, and code coverage is lying to us. So the takeaway here is that it's useful to do mutation testing, and we shouldn't blindly trust code coverage because it shows the amount of lines covered, not invariance in the code. And obviously, you should think twice before implementing heap sort in an actual project, so I'll just delete the code and use the library instead.